dear students welcome to creative educational idea let's know about what is lyric poetry a lyric poem which is any fairly short poem uttered by a single speaker the poem which is short as well as it is uttered by a single person and it expresses the state of mind and it expresses a thought or a feeling understood which expresses its a thought or feeling by a single person this is called lyric poet lyric understood lyric can be different types and i will also elaborately explain about the types of lyric so it is a poem which is expressed by a single speaker and it uh, a process of thought or feeling with the process of thought or feeling the lyric or uh, the chief quality of a lyric poem is emotional or intensity understood and it expresses the the heart of the, it may be expressed the joy sorrow and surprise this is called lyric so it is definitely this is personal lyric is usually personal that is the poet expresses his own feelings in it and it attributes with beauty variety of music let's know about it in the first part the theme is introduced in the lyric in the second part the theme is enlarged and the third part the theme reaches its climax spontaneity is an important quality of a lyric poem the poet sings effortlessly because of an inner urge of self expression it expresses the poet's feelings or thought it is completely expressed by a single speaker and in the first part it was it is introduced second part it is enlarged and third part it reaches its climax let's know the characteristics of a lyric it expresses personal or emotional feelings one and into it does not tell a story like ballad it does not tell a story it has song like qualities it is usually short which one lyric lyric is usually short it is personal and emotional feelings it creates personal and emotional feelings it does not tell a story it has song like qualities it is usually short in olden days it was sung with lyre it always uses first person's point of view understood take a glance on the types of lyric there are many different types of lyric poem like that love song patriotic song hymn elegy which means a mournful poem or which is addressed to a person or thing understood so there are many different types of lyric like love song patriotic song hymn elegy or sonnet let's know about ballad what is the definition of a ballad what is the definition of a ballad so ballad i have already explained in my previous classes that the ballad is a narrative poem which tells a story so it is a narrative poem which tells a story which tells a story so a ballad is a type of poem that tells a story was and traditionally it was set to music it is a ballad ballad is a narrative poem which tells a story and traditionally it set to music so it is the oldest poetic form in english which one ballad ballad is the oldest poetic form in english and it is the narrative poem which tells a story 
and their story is traditionally set to music also and uh, it is the oldest poetic form in english let's go to the next point what is an example of ballad poem so i told you that ballad is a narrative poem which tells a story and uh, the literary ballad form include john keats label uh, label dam dame sans mercy john keats label Damisan's Mercy and Thomas Hardy's During the Wind and Rain and Edgar Allan Poe's Annabel Lee. These are ballads. Understood? Take a glance on the features of ballad poem. What are the three features of ballad poem? Ballad emphasizes strong rhythms, repetition of key phrases and rhymes ballad emphasizes strong rhythms a repetition of key phrases as well as rhymes let's know about sonnet the sonnet is a popular classical form that has compiled up for centuries traditional sonnet is a poem of 14 lines Understood. Sonnet is a poem of 14 lines and employing one of the several rhyme scheme also and adhering to tightly structural thematic organization. Let's know about what is called sonnet. A sonnet is a formal poem and it has 14 lines. This is a poem of 14 lines and each line contains 10 syllables. A sonnet in each in sonnet each line has 10 syllables. And the sonnets are in iambic pentameter, understood? Which means the line has ten syllables as well as it has five pairs. And sonnets lines are in iambic pentameter. Let's take a glance on who is the father of sonnet, Petrarch. Petrarch is the father of sonnet. Let's know about. Uh, what are the five characteristics of sonnet? It has 14 lines, variable rhyme scheme, strict metrical construction. Understood? These are the characteristics of sonnet. What is a 15 line poem called? The 15 line poem is called Rendu. Rendu. And it is composed of 15 lines and this is known as Rendu. Uh, Rendu poems contains a fixed verse form divided into three stanzas. A quatrain, quintet, a quatrain and a sestet. Take a glance on what is the eight line poem called. The eight line poem is called Octastich. Understood? Eight line poem Octastic and it is also called Octave. Understood? Octave. What is a 14 line poem called? The poem which contains 14 lines. This is called Gloge. This is called Gloge or Glossa. The poem based of an epigraph. What is a 28 line poem called? The poem which has 28 lines. What it is called? Ballade. Understood? Ballade. Line usually 8 to 10 syllables it has. Understand the 28 lines are there. And divided into 3 octaves. 1 quatrain. Quatrain. And this is called envoy. This is called. En the last line of the stanza is called refrain. Refrain is the last line of this poem. And this is the last the last stanza of this poem. This is called refrain. Take a glance on what is a 24 line poem called? The poem which has 24 line, this is called round delay. Round delay. Understood? It can be simple lyric with a refrain but in prosody. And a round delay is a 24 line poem. Round delay. Understood? 
with a regular repeating rhyme structure. What are the three rules of a sonnet? Let's know about it again. Themes. Sonnet uh, topic generally expresses strong emotion as, we, as such as love. And uh, themes, rhyme scheme and structure. These are the three rules of a sonnet. And uh, it has themes. So sonnet's topic generally expresses strong emotion like love. And a rhyme scheme, it must have a rhyme scheme like that. Rhyme scheme pattern, the rhyme scheme of Shakespeare rhyme scheme, A, B, A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, U, F, G, G. Then the structure. These poems are 14 lines long with a lyric uh, scheme of A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, U, F, G, G. And with an iambic pentameter also. Understood? So I'm repeating that uh, again. How many stanzas is a sonnet? Uh, three, a sonnet has three stanzas. Understood? And it is written in iambic pentameter. The sonnet, the English sonnets here are the basic rules, subject, deep feelings, length, 14 lines. They are broken into three stanzas. Understood? And uh, and four lines are called quatrain. What is this uh, seven line poem called? The seven line poem is called Septet. What is the five line poem is called Limerick. Understood? Limerick. This, the poem which has seven lines is called Septet. What is the rhyme pattern of a sonnet? So, the like that's experience sonnet, it is the rhyme scheme of A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, G, G. This is the rhyme scheme of, rhyme scheme of sonnet. A sonnet usually consists of two parts. One is eight line and another one is eight line which is called octave and another one is six lines which is called sestet. Understood? A sonnet usually consists of two parts. One is eight line which is called octave and another one is six line. This is called sestet. Like the, if we keep our eyes on the experience on it, its rhyme scheme was A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, U, F, G, G. What is the meaning of epic literature? Epic is a genre of narrative defined by heroic or legendary adventures presented in a long format originating in the form of epic poetry. The genre also now applies to epic theatre, epic films, music, novels, stage play, television series, as well as video games. Understood? Let's know more about it. An epic poem or simply an epic is a lengthy narrative poem. Which one? Epic. Typically about the extraordinary deeds of extraordinary characters who in dealings with gods or others superhuman forces gave shape to the mortal universe for descendants. So epic poems are so sacred, which are lengthy and narrative poem. What is the best definition of an epic? So epic is a long narrative poem in elevated style recounting the deeds of legendary or historical hero. Like that, Homer's Iliad, Odyssey are the Iliad and the Odyssey are the epics. The work of art and the resemblers to suggestions and epic 60s ago. So these are some, some creations. These are some epics. Take a glance on the next point. What is an example of an epic in literature? Uh, in literature, the first epic was Gilgamesh. But in India, the first epic were Mahabharata as well as in Ramayana. Understood? The old Eng English Beowulf, even Milton's Paradise Lost, is sometimes classified as an epic. Epic on Gilgamesh is the first epic. And in India, Mahabharata as well as in Ramayana were the first epics. What are the features of an epic in literature? 
so epic has six elements take a glance on them what are they like that plot centers around hero of unbelievable stature involve deeds of superhuman strength and valor war setting involve supernatural and or other world forces sustained elevation of style poet remains subjective and omniscient what is epic in indian literature which i have already explained you now the ramayana and mahabharata these are the first epic in indian literature what is the first epic poem so gilgamesh is the first epic poem what is epic known for epic system is one of the largest providers of health information what is epic known for epic system is one of the largest providers of health information technology used primarily by the us hospitals understood so so leave it out i'm just talking about epic that is on and it is the system of largest providers of health information this is uh, this part is uh, not acceptable i will explain you the next one what is an another word of epic so let's take a glance on it that epic which i told you that the epic the first epic was the gilgamesh the first epic was the gilgamesh and in india in indian english literature and if you talk about the first epic that uh, mahabharata as well as ramayan understood let's know about the synonyms of most epic like that colossal considerable enormous gigantic humongous monumental sizable these are the synonyms of epic and tremendous also so why do we say epic epic comes from greek word for song understood because greek poets like homer why do we say epic because the it epics are extracted from the greek word understood it comes from the greek word for uh, word for song because greek poets like homer song their poems we tend to use epic for long ambitious novels this is called epic this is a long ambitious novels or movies epic can be used as an adjective describe something historical important lasting or complex understood how many types of epics are there uh, epics can be divided into two types like that the folk epic understood and uh, the developed through the oral tradition two main types of epics have been have been applied, explicated that folk epic and created and developed through the oral tradition and the literary epic literary epic and the literary epic refers to a single identified author so what is the first epic in india which i have told you the ramayan and mahabharata these are the first epic in india who is the father of epic poetry homer homer is considered as the father of epic poetry and uh, the author of iliad as well as odyssey the homer is the father of epic poetry what is epic in english language so in english epic refers to a film a poem or a book that is long and contains lot of action you are dealing with historical subject understood take a glance on bars library bars library so bars library in english uh, which uh, the poetry whose lines do not have a regular regular pattern and uh, he published a series of poems in bars library on con contemporary themes free verse or bars library so free verse is an also known as bars library a common feature of modernist poetry take a glance on what it is what is called bars in english literature a bars is a collection of metrical lines of poetry 
it is a collection of metrical lines of poetry it is used to define the difference between difference of poetry as well as prose and the verse contains rhythm and pattern and more often than not verse contains rhythm as well as pattern take a glance on how many types the verses are verses can three verses can be divided into three types rhyme verse blank verse free verse so rhyme verse is historically most commonly used form of verse in english so verses are three types or uh, rhyme verse free verse blank verse as well as free verse and the blank verse is a poetry with, uh, in regular metrical but on rhymed rhyme verse historically the most commonly used form of verse in english blank verse uh, this is a poetry written in regular metrical but on rhymed lines free verse is usually defined as having no fixed meter this is called free verse what is writing arranged in lines that have rhythm and that often rhyme at end the synonym of verse is poetry poems lyrics rhyme understood these are the synonyms of verse what is called verse so it can sing chorusly which one verse take me out to the ball game but few realize there are also verses including one that starts kartik haji was baseball mat so verse has extracted from the latin word verses which means a line of writing is based on the proto indo european root which means torn or bent which one verse which means torn or bent how many lines a verse has a verse may have four lines maybe eight or maybe 16 also but as long as it is thoughtfully constructed the length it does not it does not have meter let's know about tragedy what is tragedy in literary terms what is tragedy tragedy in literature is defined as a genre that focuses around a noble character who struggles against strong external challenges the character will usually suffer greatly and fail as a result of their own flaws who defined tragedy aristotle greek philosopher aristotle defines tragedy what is tragedy according to shakespeare shakespeare audience expected a play to one of three types comedy usually has happy ending this is called comedy a history play which dramatizes stories from the past this is called history play or a tragedy which is characterized by death or disaster according to shakespeare which is characterized by characterized by death and disaster this is called tragedy who is the father of tragedy aeschylus aeschylus is called the father of tragedy according to the philosopher flavius philostratus aeschylus was known as the father of tragedy who first wrote tragedy aeschylus the first great tragedian what are the four types of tragedy the first there is the complex tragedy of peripetia and anagnorisis second tragedy is suffering th- suffering and third tragedy character and fourth tragedy is spectacle tragedy of spectacle the tragedy of character the first tragedy uh, the complex tragedy second tra- uh, second the tragedy of suffering 
third the tragedy of character and the fourth one the tragedy of spectacle what are the themes of tragedy tragedy dealt with the big themes love loss pride abuse of power and fraught relationship between man and girl or gods these are the themes of tragedy why is hamlet called a tragedy because the hamlet is a revenge tragedy it features element of tragedy common in this time such as murder ghosts and someone seeking revenge no, uh, this is called revenge tragedy or tragedy what was the first tra uh, tragedy play asilas asilas greece and the persian is recognized as the first tragic uh, first tragedy play let's know about comedy what is a comedy in english literature a comedy is defined dramatic work that is written for the purpose to amuse someone or amuse or create entertainment among the audience this is called comedy what is called a comedy let's know so you know that mid uh, midnight's dream take a glance on comedy is a genre a fiction that consists of discourses works intended to be humorous or amusing by in inducing laughter especially in theater film stand up comedy television radio books or any other entertainment medium these are known as the comedy what is comedy and its characteristics what is comedy and its characteristics so comedy must have the happy ending the comedy must have the happy ending and uh, the taboo subjects use of incongruence juxtaposition these are the characteristics of a comedy what is the classic definition of comedy so comedy entertainment such as plays and films particular scene in them that are intended to make people who is intended to make people laugh this is known as comedy it must have a happy ending it must have a happy ending let's know about first comedy this is ralph roister duster and it was written in 16th century by nicolas udal the first comedy was ralph roister duster what is the purpose of the comedy comedy type drama or uh, art for the cheap object which according to modern notions so which means which is used to amuse this is known as comedy let's know about romantic comedy romantic comedy it is also known as romcom or romcom is a subgenre of comedy and a slice of fiction what is romantic comedy according to shakespeare the comedy is of incidents comedy is of mistaken identity the plot is often driven by mistaken identity understood characters play scenes in disguise and common for female characters to disguise themselves as male characters understood if the character play scenes disguise and it's uh, common for female characters to disguise themselves as male characters this is known as romantic comedy comedies of incidents or comedies of identity what is an example of romantic comedy take a glance on shakespeare's comedies of the late 1590s a meet summer night stream 12th night as you as you like it much ado about nothing approaches the comedy of manners and 
द मर्च एंड ऑफ वेनिस क्लोजर टू ट्रेजिक कॉमेडी दिज आर द रोमांटिक कॉमेडी इन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर व्हाट वाज द फर्स्ट रोमांटिक कॉमेडी इन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर द फ्रीयर बके बेखन एंड फ्रीयर बंगे एंड इट वाज रिटन 1591 एंड पब्लिश्ड इन 1594 This is known as the successful romantic, fast romantic comedy in English, Freer Baker and Freer Bongi. It was written in 1594 and brought out in 1590. It was written in 1591 and it was brought out in 1594. Who is the founder of romantic comedy in English literature? The Elizabethan dramatists. They were the founder of romantic comedy in English literature. Let's know about the revenge and revenge tragedy. Drama in which dominant motive is revenge for real or imaginary injury. Understood? The drama in dominant motive, which is revenge for a real or imagined injury. These are called the revenge tragedy. Like that, Shakespeare's Hamlet is also a revenge revenge tragedy. What is the element of revenge tragedy? What is the element of revenge tragedies? The quest of vengeance, promoting of the ghost of murdered kinsmen, loved one scenes of real or feigned insanity, a play within a play, scenes in graveyards, scenes of carnage and multi uh, mutilation, mutilation. These are the elements of revenge tragedy what was the first revenge tragedy in english literature spanish tragedy is the first revenge tragedy in english literature and it was written by thomas kidd the first revenge tragedy was spanish tragedy it was written by thomas kidd this was the first revenge tragedy in english literature what are the four revenge tragedies The four revenge tragedies were Spanish tragedy, revenge tragedy, the revenge bossy of D. Ambuyas, and Atheist tragedy. Who is the father of revenge tragedy? So I told you that the first revenge tragedy was Spanish tragedy, and who is the father of revenge tragedy? Thomas Kidd. What are the five characteristic of revenge revenge tragedy? What are the five characteristics of revenge tragedy? Ghost and the supernatural, murder, insanity, a character seeking revenge against a strong, personification of revenge, a clear villain, comedy of humor. What is comedy of humor? The comedy of humor is a genre of dramatic comedy. broad lead focus in or focuses on a character or a range of characters this is called comedy of humor which has the overriding overriding traits or humors of which dominates their personality desires and conduct what is it this is comedy of humor who is known as the comedy of humors ben johnson The playwright, English playwright Ben Jonson, is known as the comedy of humor. And uh, from the late 16th century, what is the comedy of humors by Ben Jonson? The comedy of humors was a natural expression of genius. that one, the term humor as used by ben jonson is based on ancient philosophical theory of four fluids found in the human body what are the four uh, humors in literature shakespeare understood human personality in the terms available to its day age that of new discarded theory of four bodily humors blood bile melancholy 
blood bile melancholy and phlegm these are the discarded theory of four bodily humors what is comedy of manner in literature a comedy of manner is concerned with social usage and the question of whether our characters meet uh, certain social standards what are the characteristics of comedy of manners in literature so comedy of manners is the opposite of slapstick slapstick plays it depend on rely on rely upon physical actions and mimicry understood what is the comedy of manners in restoration age the comedy of manners are also called a restoration comedy and the most popular subgenre although they ultimately uphold the status quo status quo means exiting state of affairs understood the comedy of manners uh, they are also known as restoration comedy take a glance on who wrote the comedy of manners the comedy of manners was written by Moliere The works like The School of Wives 1662 Tartuffe 1664 and The Misanthrope 1666 What are the conventions of comedy of manners It implies a polite and well-bred behavior Comedy of manners involves a sophisticated wit and a talent The comedy of manners must have the sophisticated as well sophisticated as well as talent. The comedy of manners they are also called restoration comedy. What is the comedy of manners and humors? Let's know about it. What is the comedy of manners and humors? The comedy of manners is often satirical and cynical in tone. the characters exaggerated the humors and providing main source of comedy let's know about who is the father of comedy of manners the ancient greek dramatist menander he is called the father of comedy of manners what was the first comedy of manners much ado about nothing Shakespeare's creation much ado about nothing might be considered the first comedy of manners in English literature much ado about of nothing much ado about nothing why is it comedy of manners called restoration comedy why the comedy of manners is also called restoration comedy restoration comedy in english comedy uh, written and performed in the restoration period the comedy of uh, comedy of manners they were written in restoration period six, uh, during 1660 to 1670 that's why they are called comedy of manners or restoration comedy let's know about the characteristic of comedy of manners so that uh, if we think about the elements of comedy of manners like love marriage treacherous persons romantic dialogues wit and humor these are the elements of comedy of manners or the restoration comedy so dear students you will mock up all of these don't leave out a single point because a few days left you will appear in exam as soon as possible all of your class will be completed understood and having completed the literature part and the grammatical part will be grammar point grammatical point also i will involve i will count in and uh, if you will have any doubt you can mention your doubt and uh, take a glance on each points and don't leave it out thanks a lot